the Fujifilm X-Pro3. It's this intentionally inefficient camera. That's kind of what makes it perfect. We gotta start with gas stations. You know, just like in the automotive scene, where there's different subcultures, you know, you got the classics and imports and exotics. With photography, you got the analog folk. And they seem fascinated with gas stations for whatever reason. Matter of fact, the entire reason I made this video was this meme. I wanted to explore this analog subculture, but I've never shot film and I wasn't about to do that or open that can of worms for this video. So I decided to jump in with the most analog digital camera on the market. The X-Pro3 came out to very mixed reviews. To be completely honest, when I reached out to Fujifilm to borrow this camera, I thought my conclusion would be that this is sort of this pretentious retro wannabe camera. Here's how it actually went. Most of the time, this camera is gonna be used with natural light. So that's what I wanted to do. I didn't bring any lights with me. I just wanted to show up at my buddy's shops and take a few pictures. The LCD screen is by default hidden away, which means you don't get to preview your image right away like you're used to on every other device that has a screen on the back. And what it's forcing you to do, and this kind of brings it down to the ethos of this camera, is for you to slow down. When, when things are inefficient, it creates a bit of a pause. And that pause can either frustrate you or can allow you to reflect a little bit, saying, do I really need to rush through this? Does this need to be super quick and efficient? Or maybe, maybe there's a way that I can slow myself down and maybe savor this process a little bit more. And that's really unique about this camera. It's very strange for, because you think about it, they've got the X-T line, right? They've got the X-T4 and X-T3, and then you've got the X-Pro3. So it's interesting to look at the design choices between the two. They both share the same processor and the same sensor. And to go the X-Pro3 route is to go the route of less efficiency. Naturally, it's a camera that I'm sure Fujifilm is expecting to sell fewer quantities of compared to the X-T4. To continue the car analogy, it's almost like buying a manual transmission car in the year 2022. You know, there aren't that many available and the ones that are aren't gonna be competing on efficiency or top speed or how fast the gears change. The reason you're purchasing them is for the experience. So if you know cars and you appreciate the value proposition of a Toyota GR86, then you understand the value proposition of the X-Pro3 and if you don't, then maybe that's not the right camera for you. So what I initially thought of as sort of this pretentious forced inefficiency design of the camera, on second thought, you realize it's maybe a bit more common than you think in the things we enjoy most.